Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're with Comic Zach Sims. Zach Sims, how the hell are you? Oh, I'm good. Uh, Brian, thank you for having I'm doing, me. Oh, I'm just thinking coming on during the pandemic and it's uh, where you've been doing online comedy i know i follow you at zach we are also zach sims which is hilarious sure because i was like what are you zach sims i forgot and you're like i'm also zach sims and it's like a who's on first situation yeah i want to make it as complex uh, <laughs> as possible there's yeah, there another must... uh zach sims who's a tech guy who is very successful fucking, and fucking nerd yeah. successful yeah. nerd absolutely he was on colbert uh, the old Colbert. Uh, and he, Fuck, you, you won't even be the first Zach Sims on Colbert, huh? I know, I know. And his <laughs> hair is almost as good as mine, too. So there's, I have a lot of issues with him. Dude, uh, yeah, I, I see your hair game right now. It's on point. I also check out all your pictures here. You're also Zach Sims on Instagram as well. And you have Zach, Zachary Sims comedy back when you are going by Zachary. Yeah, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes, Brian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, I don't know if you had this, but when I was in my early 20s, I liked the idea of seeming older, I think. <laughs> and then uh, I at one point moved to Los Angeles, and I was like, it's just Zach Sims just sounds so much better. So uh, to go with it. Did you, stand, did you do stand-up out there first? Uh, yeah, well, I was, you know, I'm from New Orleans, so okay. I was doing it there for a little bit, and then here, and then I moved to L.A. for a little bit, and then I moved back here. Wow. So, yeah. So why the move? Did you think LA, LA was where it's at and you figured out? No, no way, dude. Let's go back to New York, New York City in time for a pandemic. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It was, you know, I did the I had been doing comedy in New York for a little bit and nobody had figured out that I was a genius. Uh, so I moved to L.A. for that. And then it turned out they didn't really know either. I mean, it actually was fine. Uh, but I don't uh, I just kind of like it here more, to be honest. Yeah. So you're able to get more stage time here. Sure. Well, yeah. Now, not, for some reason, it's a little tricky these days. But yeah. uh, in <laughs> yeah, general, I, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I forgot when when we were talking. I see mm-hmm. on your web, website here, do you used to do hot soup at Irish Exit? Uh, I was just a show I was on, sure. Yeah, was that Matt, Ru- Matt Ruby show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I think my buddy tried to organize something there because he was a big drinker at Irish Exit. Oh, really? And, uh, what he did not do, we were going to play it, play during this the kind of comedy musical show, and he did not get a PA. Like he was just like he was oh, just a yeah. big swing. And and this was my friend. This is not Matt Ruby. This is just some guy who drinks. He used to drink a lot. Like he was like, look at me, big swing and Nick book and this shit. It's like, dude, you didn't get a PA. But the comics were able to make lemonade out of lemons, and they were able to just shout their jokes. Meanwhile, me and my guitarist were just sitting there with our dicks in our butt. <laughs> oh, right in the butt, yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we, yeah, we skip all the fucking mouth stuff straight to the butt when we get fucked to the tune of no PA. No, sure. No, I've done those. I've done all, you know, I've done the outdoors. I've done the no microphone. Uh, you, uh, it always shows you, like the microphone is pretty much the only thing that keeps stand up from being the most sad thing. I think. <laughs> and without the, it just kind of turns into like an AA meeting very quickly. Without yeah. the microphone. But I've done it. Yeah, seeing you guys, you guys up there with the tools, man. You guys are just standing there naked, man. You guys have nothing but your jokes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, like when I lived in Los Angeles, I had a buddy of mine who was a drummer, and I would meet up with him and another guy at a diner, and he would always be blown away that I could just leave a show immediately and come meet them. If I didn't have to like break down shit and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then, are you doing on the road with uh, Dan Wilbur? He's a former guest. Was that we back did in the a day? little road? We did some road gigs. And uh, what you're really seeing is that uh, I need to update my website. But we did some road <laughs> uh, in uh, right before the pandemic, honestly, like February and yeah. uh, some stuff. And some that was probably more later in 2019. But, yeah, Dan and I used to do the road a little bit together. Yeah, it's so it's so sad that it seems so long ago, but it's just because of the pandemic. 49 weeks ago was this Instagram post. Mm-hmm. And that was just before the pandemic tore everything to shit. And so you've been doing the outdoor shows and are you doing the rooftop shows yet? Have you found a rooftop that's cheap enough? Uh, I have not yet. I know there's some stuff in Bushwick. I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I'm sure I would like to do it and I'll do it at some point, but it's also like, uh, you know, doing stand up outside once every six weeks isn't the most appetizing thing in the world to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, but also, I got to do it at some point or I'm going to lose my mind. So I've been doing yeah. a few Zoom things, but uh, yeah, we'll see. 
We'll see. What yeah, happens. and then, yeah, what we're gonna talk about real quick is the fact that you were you grew up religious, but you no longer are, man. Uh, I'm somebody yeah. who's who's uh, you know had a bunch of Lutheran pastors in my family, so we're Protestant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Protestants, and I had a bunch of, you know, parents grew up in the church, and it still just kind of makes sense to me, so I'm still religious. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love, you know, having people on who just like, you know, or or I love having comics on, and sometimes they're like, yeah, God is dead. And so, <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's cool, as long as we're going to talk about it, <laughs> as long sure. as, it's fun, as it's funny. So, yeah, tell me kind of what was your experience growing up, and is the fact that it was strict, did that kind of turn you off religion growing up? Um, Potentially, I'll say before I, I have uh, little interest in uh, comedians who just make fun of religious people in very simple ways. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, dude, it's, a, it's a fucking like applause line at the beginning of a Mark yeah. Maron or a Joe Rogan, like, God is dead. Everybody applauds, applauds. You don't get the same applause line. And of course, it's not a laugh sign line. So why are you doing it? But you don't get the same applause line in a comedy club for to God is very much alive. Sure, sure. Yeah, people, <laughs> people are less interested uh, in that while they're drunk. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, grew up very strict Southern Baptist home, um, mostly through my dad, who, uh, you know, through a lot of fun things. We did not talk for a long time, so I'm sure that has a part to do with it. Uh-huh. Um, but to be honest, it's also like, uh, in hindsight, uh, I don't know how into it I ever really was. And then, yeah, moving to New York and kind of just having those early 20s discoveries of who one is, I became less and less uh inclined to it but i I, i'm not super uh like i would say that i'm probably an atheist but i don't really feel like talking about it yeah no i can talk to you about it but i mean i'm not like uh i'm not proselytizing from the rooftops yeah and it sounds like a lot of them are in the same way a religious person would be like and it can it can be funny like meaning like i think bill burr did the thing about the the Mm -hmm. curling joke where he let the 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 puck just kind of you let his religion go in the same way curling happens in the Olympics, and you know although he kind of I think he misconstrued Lutheranism like I think I think he said Lutherans think that all people are just dead and you die and he thought that was horrifying. But one thing I liked was he was like yeah I'm a free agent right now so meaning like yeah you can grow up and be like oh fuck that whatever I was raised with go fuck that shit but it's like okay well what do you believe like take the next step and, and say okay well how was the world created okay it was just always there you know like mm-hmm. the, bl- the black hole was just always there doesn't that require as much faith as religion like like to take the next step and say okay well what do you believe and you don't have to believe anything but god either exists or he doesn't you know there could be 25 gods or, or zero gods like so anywhere from be zero to 25 or, or 2500 like there's truth there. There's either God or there is not. And he's either the God of people who gives a shit about people and wants people to treat each other with respect, or he's the God of animals who gives a shit that we're nice to cows and we don't eat them, you know, like (laughs) it either exists or it doesn't. So isn't it kind of the, I mean, I don't give a shit if a person does it, but if you're going to go around saying God is dead, then what's the next words out of your mouth? Okay. Well then, well then, you know, you just believe that people are always here and then they die and they're dead forever. Well, what do you have for that? You know, what kind of proof do you have for that? Nothing. Okay. Well, it's good. It's good that you have faith in that theory. Yeah. I, uh, I hear you. I, I'm more just a fan of just be nice to people. That's my main, uh, mantra. You know, I think, uh, if you want to believe it, I mean, honestly, like crystals to me, or just another form of a religion, but for people who, uh, you know, don't want to read the Bible or uh, aren't into all the homophobia. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, just a, a, you know, you want to have sex maybe uh, without guilt. <laughs> and people have their own, you know, hangups on that stuff. But uh, that's funny. But also, it's, you want to believe in some sort of higher power, right? Yeah, is that is that part of the things that were kind of a turn off the organized religion aspects of okay, here's people on the religious right saying that everybody who's not, you know, only having sex with a woman inside a marriage is going to hell. Like, is some of that mm-hmm. a turn off a turn off, and why it's appealing to kind of talk about well, f- at least fuck organized religion. Sure, I uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Southern Baptists. I don't know a tremendous amount about Lutherans, but Southern Baptists are pretty strict. I would say they're pretty kind of down the. The, uh, you know, down the book, that's not a term, but, you know, by the book, <laughs> uh, when it comes to the Bible, I think they're pretty literal on uh, a lot of these things. So that's going to be an issue. Um, honestly, I mean, I'm sh- I also was a white guy, so it's not hard to be a white guy in Southern Baptist Church, but everybody was nice to me. I never saw like a lot of overt hostility. Um, but behind that, I mean, there's still a thick layer at least in Southern Baptist world, there's a thick layer of homophobia and, uh, you know, racism and kind of just overall bigotry. 
uh, that I think go through a lot of organized religion. But certainly, as it seems like you're saying, I don't think there's an issue with having some faith in a, in something. Is, is there there's racism in Southern Baptist? Isn't you know Southern Baptist fairly colored? Are they racist against white people? Or are you so, saying that like well, if you're so white, that, a white congregation, you try to keep the blacks out, and you're a black congregation, you try to keep the whites whites out? So I would so Southern there's different forms of Baptist. Uh, this is kind of the thing that so Southern Baptist is white people. Southern Baptist is ninety eight percent white people i would say well we had what i had heard and not even, this was never even used negatively but we had always i'd always used the phrase black baptist for what you're <laughs> and what's the official what's, yeah what's the official i do not i would I, you know i would have to have done some research for that that would but, have been funny if it actually was black baptist I, you know what's well, kind of you know how like you find out like as a kid i was always kind of wanted to be a, a messianic jewish person because I loved comedy, and I so I liked Jewish people, Woody Allen, whatnot. I'm a child, uh, and but I wanted to go to heaven, so it's like you could still get in. But I, but I say that say when I found that they actually referred to themselves as Jews for Jesus, it just blew my mind because that just sounds like what the insult, would, what you would call somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so it might actually be Black Baptist. I don't know, uh-huh. but. That is, but that is the Baptist church that you are thinking of, which is very soulful. I've been to those services; very exciting. Okay, this that's probably is, less judgmental, I would think. Oh, you would think absolutely, of course. <laughs> this is like old white people, like average age sixty-five, okay, in like very heavy suits in Louisiana in the summer. Wow. So it's like just a lot of people are very unhappy. Uh, so you said uh, we, you said you're Louisiana? Is that yeah, I'm from uh, originally New Orleans, and we moved a little bit outside. So you are, have you watched the podcast episode where it was Theo Vaughn and Mark Norman just talked about their Louisiana roots? And did you, were no, you able to kind of, kind of relate to any of it? Sure. I mean, I know both of those guys. So <laughs> to some uh, degrees, I haven't seen Theo in a long time, but I have not heard that. But I would guess my upbringing would probably been a mix between the two because Mark is more from like real New Orleans okay. uh, and Theo is a little more from a little more country. Uh, yeah, so I would guess I was probably somewhere in the middle of those two guys. But who knew? I mean, I guess it's, uh, you know, the third name there is Zach Sims, and it's just like, you know, you guys are the three people who are making Louisiana into the the comedy capital <laughs> after, you know, the Redheads from Boston came out, you know? Sure. Well, there's Alan. Don't forget about Alan. Uh, yeah, we yeah. talked about Alan earlier today, and I think that's when it first came to light for me that she was Louisiana and why mm-hmm. people thought she should not have hung out with Bush because of his his response to Katrina. Oh, um, yeah, sure. No, that's super valid. I, I, I don't think Alan was thinking about that would be my guess, but uh, right. that's a super valid point. Yeah, I think I got that from a comic, so I can't attribute it. But I mean, did you do any comedy while you were down there in Louisiana? Yeah, sure. And no, do, you still, do, you, do you still? Uh, I mean, not obviously nothing right now, but yeah. Right. Absolutely. No, I, I enjoy uh, going down there. Absolutely. It's great. Good crowds. Um, you know, I think it'd be it's hard to like sustain a full like comedy club down there just because the way new orleans is but uh when you can get them to a show they have a great time and how is new orleans you said you know new orleans is yeah. a certain way where it wouldn't be able to support a comedy club how come well i, I mean I, I i'm not the mayor but i would think <laughs> uh financially i think it's you know people don't quite realize the lack of money going on in that city a lot of the uh, time it can be I tough know. to support and it's just a music town and it's also like i remember it's just not, it's uh, people don't like to make plans and they like to uh, <laughs> uh, kind of do things as they come. So I just don't think going to the comedy club is the first thought people have on a way to have, like have fun on a weekend night, you know, they'll go. Yeah, they'll go to, have, it'd have to have a big barking presence like Greenwich Village. A Absolutely. Village. And then you're doing it in the French Quarter and then you're just doing tourists and you're, uh, you know what I mean? It's not to real Louisianans anyway. And like yeah. watch, watching Zach Sims and Mark Norman and Theo Vaughn, like if there could be a single comedy style emerging, what would it be? Because uh, look at their divergent styles and I'm like, maybe Zach Sims can tie it all together. Sure. Well, I, I have to mention Sean Patton just because if yeah. you want to mention uh, the successful person. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, Kate, Caitlin Cook on and I think she might tour with Sean Patton. And so, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so he's, an, he's another big one, huh? And Hannibal Burris talks about it. He, talk, he has a couple. Hannibal of really enjoys hanging stories. out. Yeah, he really enjoys hanging out in New Orleans. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's a super big similarity uh, between us. I mean, to me, that's one of the nice things about New Orleans is there's a great diversity of humanity. 
uh, who live in that area. My upbringing was completely different than Mark's, uh, and I imagine very different than Theo's. Um, I don't drink as much as those guys either, so I can't even tell you that it's like a drinking comedy. Um, I don't know. You know, you could say maybe a little more laid back if we want to have that. Okay. Just say give you something. Okay. Uh, but but I'm you think that because it's so diverse, it's going to be a variety of styles that emerge just like New York City. I would say, I mean, obviously, you know, New York is kind of the mecca. But uh, as somebody who goes back, there's still plenty of funny people who live down there. And they have a very, a lot of them have a very different way. You know, there's a guy, Vincent Zambon, very funny guy. And he uh, kind of has this slightly absurd style, very slow, but also kind of has a little bit of a New Orleans Cajun-ish accent, which I think adds a layer to it. Uh, yeah. You so know, you, like, you ditched the accent long ago to the extent you had one. Yeah, I never had one. I never had one. That's a lot of, you know, a lot of people in New Orleans don't really have them. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot. And there's just, yeah, I mean, I, I could go through names, but who cares? But there's a lot of great comics uh, in that city. Well, uh, and, I, and I guess I, to kind yeah, of I, like, yeah, illustrate what your style is, because it looks like, you know, not only did you go on the road with Dan Wilbur, you also did the No One Asked for This Quarantine Game Show, which oh, was yeah. hosted by you and Dan. And so kind of how did you find somebody who was, uh, you know, kind of a, a you know, either a personality or a, or a style that kind of jived with your own to the extent that you guys put on shows together. Sure. I mean, I've known Dan for a long time. Uh, Dan is also much better at sending emails than I am <laughs> and, uh, uh, organizing things. But Dan's, you know, very funny. I think we um, hopefully we'll do more of that game show, to be honest. I think there's just been some personal stuff that is that uh, Dan's got to take care of. And he's doing just fine. But so that might be a little bit till we get that up and going again. But uh, he was getting uh, getting married for a second there. Maybe it's related to that. Uh, it is not. It is. It's oh, really, that's. I think that's still happening. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, it's good to hear he's still alive and he's still getting married. Yes, so. he's still alive. Dan's doing just fine. Dan's doing. Just fine. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think. Um, to be honest, this is what I would say is I have full respect for zoom shows and I have full respect for outdoor comedy and I have full respect for anybody doing whatever they can. But the idea of running a stand-up show on zoom did not really appeal to me, but I also felt the need to do something. Yeah. So a new show seemed like it could be interesting. So and at some, uh, at some so point I, just gonna, are you just going to go on the road and try to hit whoever's open or like, you know, if you're, if you're kind of chomping at the bit and you're not enjoying zoom shows or outdoor shows, like mm -hmm. how do you, how do you get your fix? Do you go on the road? Well, at the moment, I'm just writing some more like uh, uh, a humor pieces oh, okay. and then stuff like that. Um, uh, maybe a, a script or two. Um, absolutely, I would love to, but I also am not dumb, and I'm not going to just go out and uh, in the middle of a pandemic uh, just for my own selfish gain. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, I, have, I have an itch that can be scratched in different ways other than exposing myself and others to the pandemic. Yeah. And I have the benefit there. You know, I would love to be making 100% of my money off of stand-up comedy, although now I'm lucky that I'm not. Uh, yeah. I, I just work freelance as a writer. So I have the benefit of being able to do that. So at yeah. least the financial needs are met at the moment. So Zach, yeah, Zach Sims is a funny guy, and it's it's so cool that after a pandemic he can be like, oh shit, I'm funny at everything. Maybe I can submit some writings too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Although I much prefer, you know, you write something and you don't get, you just don't get that instant feedback. So I prefer <laughs> telling me how good I am in person. Yeah. Uh, but well, he's the only Zach Sims I care about. That tech guy and Cole Bear's a piece of shit. And so, I mean, he's the only Zach Sims, but across all social media, he's also Zach Sims. So, Zach Sims, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you.